the Elite Life Podcast. With your hosts, Trisha and Kylie. Here, we guide you on a journey of personal and professional transformation. Revealing the secrets to success. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, join us as we unlock the doors to the elite world of growth, grit, and grace. So, let's dive in. Welcome, 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 friends, to another episode of the Elite Life Podcast. I'm Trisha, and with me, as always, is my fabulous co-host, Kylie. That's me. Hey, everybody. Today, we have a special treat for you. Um, we are collabing with the amazing Erica Crouppen, the host of the Scoop Podcast. Erica, go ahead and roll, roll your nonsense. Well, <laughs> your intro, not nonsense. Intro. I feel like it's nonsense sometimes when we do it. Well, let me come in with my crappy little intro, right? Uh, so I'm I'm Erica, the owner of Croupin's Poop and Scoopin', the host of the Scoop Podcast. And I'm really excited to be talking some crap with you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Producer Dave is on for the first time. He is not a professional podcaster like us ladies, and he probably <laughs> doesn't like to talk even a quarter of as much. So I feel like this is going to turn into that scene from The Fifth Element where Chris Rock is trying to get words out of Bruce Willis, and he's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing you guys should all know is this is part one of a two-part series. So after you watch this one, if you're in the future, watch the second one if it's already out. And if it's not, wait till next week and it'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> So we know many of our listeners dream of starting their own shows, and um, who better to guide them than the three of us, right? So uh, we've successfully navigated and done the heavy lifting um, to just bring you guys the ins and outs of getting started without getting burnt out before you even get started. So uh, first, let's dive in here. Erica, what inspired you to start your podcast? Oh, goodness. I like to talk. It's, it's fun. Uh, I also had the the YouTube channel, and because of that, there's times where I didn't really want to be on camera all the time. So I was like, well, if I do a podcast, then I can still get my content out, and then I don't have to be on camera. But I ended up doing a video podcast, so that whole idea was just squashed. Um, and then a lot of people were doing podcasts. It was like the cool thing to do. So I was like, oh, I'm going to start this podcast. So then on my birthday, my husband's like, I'm going to take you. I'm going to get you all your podcasting stuff. You can start right away. I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much. I waited months. It was collecting <laughs> dust. And he's like, hey, what's going on with the podcast? I'm like, I'm just scared. Like, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. He said, Erica, you have so many people around you that are podcasting that know what they're doing. You just have to ask for help. And that's something I really struggle with. So I reached out to a producer. I said, hey, can we have a conversation? And then that was it. I hit the ground running right after that. I love that. And that's kind of what I did, too, was success leaves clues, right? So I actually reached out to our mutual friend, Brian Fullerton, and I was like, hey, you got a podcast? We want to have a podcast. What do you use for equipment? <laughs> but also the same thing happened. I was like, hey, Dave, we'll get this. And then we got nothing for months. <laughs> and it, like, happened that, like, the guy that we called, he, like, put us on one of those email things or maybe we, like, inquired. So I kept getting emails, and it was like – we really need to just do this. Like, I keep getting these emails, and I said I was going to get this equipment, but yeah. So lesson number one, just do it. Yeah. Get the equipment. Let's roll. And it's ask somebody who already knows how to do it. Success leaves clues, y'all. Yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, don't fix what ain't broken. And, um, I mean, I know Trisha and I originally planned for um, – you know, like our podcast to be very real estate based. Remember when we were initially just kind of throwing ideas yeah. around of what we wanted. Um, but it's kind of grown and developed on its own into more of like a broad personal and professional development situation. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's important, too, because when you're thinking about what you want a podcast about, right? Like, I'm sure it was for your industry, too. You're like, how many pooper scoopers <laughs> can I get as subscribers? Because you want you want to build your base, your listening base. So it's like, if I don't integrate some things, and at least that's what we figured out with real estate, we're like, okay, we have all of these people on our social platforms for friends, and people kept asking, like, well, what your podcast is about? Is it just about real estate? Because if I don't want to buy or sell a house, why do I want to listen to your podcast? Right, right. Absolutely. Um, so let's kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, the first few things you want to take care of is um, 
who's working on this with you? Yeah. You need to figure out if you're flying solo or like me. if you have a team. Um, Trisha's famous for saying, hire out your weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> So here's Dave, who is our strength, and he's here today to kind of fill in the sections that um, that he does. Hi, Dave. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good. Um, we've got a little bit of a list here. Um, so we've got Trisha and Kylie and Dave, and you want to figure out who's doing what, because there are a lot of moving pieces, right? You have the creative piece of putting it together. You have who's going to be on the show, who's going to edit the show, and things like that. Um, there are things that I know that we have used, um, like Fiverr. Uh, you used Fiverr to put together like our intro and stuff? Yeah, Fiverr did the intro, the outro, the commercial, the music for it. Um, and then we used different programs like... Canva, for example, um, to create logos. Um, just trying to think of what other things we can actually use besides uh, Adobe for editing. Um, well, you could do that on a lot of different uh, software, but that's what we use. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think of what else we did. Intro, outro, commercials. Yeah, and you want to think about your vibe too. Like that was a question that kept coming back to me because I kind of like – Leave, leave the tribe, right? Like, <laughs> well, what do you want your commercial to say? I'm like, I don't know, like some stuff. Like, what do you want your picture to look like? I'm like, I don't know. And then um, that's another thing, too, that has really morphed because Kylie put together our initial thumbnails. And then after a while, I was like, does it look too girly? No. Like, how do you feel about yours? Because yours has a lot of pink in it, Erica. What did you kind of think about with your vibe and your colors and things of that nature? I just wanted it to catch attention. So, and I, pink is an eye catching color, right? Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people are using the pink, especially in the industry of like landscaping. And because I am a service based business, it's a lot of times male dominated, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, pink is going to stand out. That's going to be the color. Now, do I think that that has hindered me from growing a male audience? No, because it's eye catching and the men are drawn to the pink. So I have a very large male audience, which is nice because they're so supportive. And, they know a lot about the service industry, so they've just given me so much information. Thank you, landscaping community. I appreciate you guys so much. <laughs> I love that. And you know what? I didn't really think about that that factor because I was like, oh, if everything's pink on our and on ours or everything's like, you know, quote unquote girly colors, um, which I guess also shows my age because I think like nowadays generations are less like these are girl colors, these are boy colors, like Trent wore a pink suit to prom, you yeah. know? So I guess like sometimes you even have to like, this is something I learned a lot is like taking yourself out of the equation like what I think isn't necessarily what everybody else thinks right and I think that's something important to think about too because you had done our first thumbnails Kylie and then Dave you did the next ones which I never talked to you about but I was like you didn't even ask if I like these and these look like old people's graphics you know <laughs> so it's like that's the other thing when you're on a team like Erica you get to be like you're it you know you're like I call the shots I decide if I like it or don't like it and it's in play but when you have other people you're delegating out work and then if you don't like it sometimes it's like well it's already done and it's already out in the world so that's just how it's gonna be and I think there's probably struggles with both sides right because you're able to delegate you're able to bounce ideas off of each other I'm bouncing all my ideas around to all my different personalities and different positions <laughs> within the company and it's exhausting it, I'm like just make a decision. So I'll ask my husband and he'll tell me like, maybe you should tone down the pink a little bit. And then I always do the opposite of what he says. And then, <laughs> More pink. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. So let me, let me tone it down just a smidge. So I'll add like some dimension to it. But you know, there is times where I'm like, I wish I had a team. I wish I had people to bounce ideas off of, but I'm also a control freak too. Mm -hmm. So I'm stuck in this place of like, I like to oversee everything, but that makes me the bottleneck of everything in my life right now. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about um, the first couple steps, and Dave gave us some tips on um, some software that we could get into. Um, really quick, as we kind of wrap up this talk about, like, 
colors and branding, the one thing that I want to point out is consistency. Yeah. So when we are talking about, you know, Erica's pink, um, we have a lot of like background bright colors, even though ours is mainly like black and white. Um, but we've got the cute font with like the glowy nonsense. So you want to remain consistent in whatever you choose for your branding. And that's not saying that you can't do a rebrand down the road. Like when we were starting, like Trisha said, we came to a spot where like, we just have to jump in, think less, do more. We can fix it. We, as we can pivot as we go. So we just kind of, I just hopped online. I found something, I doctored it up and it looked great. And then now we just recently went through, I don't want to say like a rebrand, but we just kind of updated everything and it looks really, really good. And I'm really proud of the work that we did um, mm -hmm. between the graphics and the audio. I love our new intro. Um, Cause you want to make sure that if you've been on, you know, if you've been in it for a while, like just keeping your picture updated, like our old stuff had like post baby Kylie and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's good to, um, it's good to update, but you want to make sure that you remain consistent with your colors, your fonts, um, so that it does stay eye catching and memorable. That's yeah. a good point. Sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. My uh, podcast picture has me with yellow hair. And so I need to update that because I, I don't have yellow hair anymore. You know, I like your hair. Thank you. Thank you. But it's not yellow. And so when I've shown up for meetings, they're like, oh, I was expecting yellow hair. You just look different because I'm 25 pounds lighter. I don't have yellow hair. And so thank you for that. <laughs> I need to update. Yes. Um, so real quick, circling back to something Dave said, commercials, intro, outro. Um, you want to make sure that when you're um, like Trisha and I, we partner with we have My Stars Academy. So we like to throw commercial in the middle. Um, and the intro and outro, I think really does explain, like, especially your intro, like, mm -hmm. I love the way it explains what the show is about. And I feel like I was listening to yours the other day and it gets you like hyped up. Like it gets you excited. Mm -hmm. Like I know, you know, I listen to a lot of Andy Frisella, Frisella Ben Shapiro, Ooh. Matt Walsh. So when I hear Matt Walsh's, -a 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 -a, I'm just like, yes, I'm amped. I'm engaged. I'm ready. And I'm excited to listen to, um, I'm excited to listen to the episode. Yeah, those those little details matter. And I think that, like you said, when, when you jump into, okay, we're going to do a show and you're, you're producing, you're producing, you're producing, especially if you have multiple people, you, you can lose that consistency. So making sure, like, if you start out a little messy, like, as soon as possible, rein it all in and make sure, like, you know who your audience is and your intro, your outro, your colors, your feel, everything is speaking to that audience. And you're making sure that every single piece of it is consistent with that vibe and that feel. And that was one of the questions, like, when Dave was shopping out our commercials, they're like, well, what kind of music do you want in the background? I'm like, I don't know. What kind of music is our music now? Is it rock and roll? Well, is we it got poppy? served. We got served with a country situation. Yeah. Yeah. And that that, that was yeah. not good. That yeah, was bad. Well. I think there was a jazzy one too that mm. was like old school jazz, and I'm like, that's not the feel. The one that we have now <laughs> is very much like the one we had before, like the that's what I saw rock pop too. sort of thing. So yeah. don't fix what ain't broken, y'all. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, I sure. just I found music off of Epidemic Sound and literally the sound is called Panty Dropper. And so when I sent it over to Mr. Producer, I said, I do apologize for the name of the song, but it's just it's got a good beat. I really <laughs> like it. <laughs> and that's what we rolled with. And he's like, all right, cool. <laughs> Um, so the next thing we want to touch on is, um, you know, the platforms that you're going to be to be on. You want to make sure that you are meeting people where they are. And a lot of people want to focus on YouTube, 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 YouTube. Um, but I know there are tons of people who, for example, like like Trisha and I, like we're in the car a lot and we're not always able to roll YouTube or like be on YouTube. So I know you listen to a lot of Apple podcasts. Mm -hmm. I listen to Google podcasts. Um, so you want to make sure that you're going to be able to meet your audience where they are. How did you decide what platforms you were going to be on, Erica? Well, Mr. Producer told me. That's oh. that's the thing is I talked to him. I said, I literally, I don't know what to do. And mm -hmm. so he's like, well, this is, where, this is the platform. This is what I like to use. This is how I feel comfortable setting you up. Are you okay with it? I said, yeah, sure, perfect. Now, there are a couple platforms that I'm not on that I would like to get on in the future. But as of right now, I mean, the downloads seem pretty good and pretty solid. So I've been pretty happy with it. What are you on right now? Great question. Um, 
<laughs> I'm on like Amazon. I'm on Audible. I'm on Apple Podcast. I'm on Lipson because Lipson is the platform that we use for the podcast. And then we also post that onto YouTube. Okay. Because You're on Google Podcast too. That's where I listen. Thank you. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, that's where I listened yesterday because I listened off of your Facebook. Yeah. Where? What are we on, oh, Dave? So we are on Captivate.fm, and that gives us access to probably, I don't know, 15 different episodes, like, you know, like Apple Podcast and Spotify and um, Google, and there's there's even India ones that are wow. very popular. That's like Juno, I think is the name of it. It's super popular with our podcast, actually. So, um, yeah, there's probably, I think, 15 different uh, podcasts that are available on Captivate FM, along with uh, they give you your own um, player, which you can then upload to different you know websites. So that's what we do as well. So, so you just upload us to Captivate and to YouTube, and then Captivate just pushes us out to everywhere else. Correct. Beautiful. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, you get you get to like log into each one, so you get to log into Apple Podcasts. Make sure you have your own account set up there, and and. Um, so do you do that first? You set up all your own accounts on all of these different ones. Yeah, you join Captivate. You create a podcast, and you can create multiple different podcasts on that as well. And then you go into each one and set up your own account on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and then you use Captivate to push it out to each one. So Captivate's nice because you just set it up where you upload the MP3 file and then you put the title and the description in and then you can put uh, guests, okay? That's another thing. You can set up your own guests. You can actually, you know, whatever time that they're going to be uh, talking on. And then you can also set up different. Uh, we, we do a lot of episodes where um, they're very short, so they don't even do commercials like in between. Mm-hmm. And so um, they have a spot where you can actually just – Sp- pick a uh, area in between the podcast and throw in your commercial or do it at the beginning or the end of the commercial. So I've been doing that with a lot of ones that are just too short to you know, put a uh, commercial in, in between. So um, schedule, you know, we, we shoot like four podcasts every month. And then I, I, I've got the next four already programmed in YouTube and Captivate to go out. You know, That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do a lot of you know a lot of stuff on um, you know with our logos for you know Canva and you know we use um, socialchamp uh, io to do all of the you know future podcasts, um, shorts, things of that nature. It's all set up right now. So, Can you talk about that a little bit more? Because that's where I struggled. Back in December, I got so exhausted with making the shorts, uploading them, titling them, and scheduling them that I quit doing them all together because it was just – it was far too overwhelming. So you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, we use Opus Clip. Okay. So Opus Clip is like $19 a month, and uh, they give you so many uh, hours of – clips so you basically upload your clip to them and then it um, uses artificial intelligence and cuts clips depending on how how much you want so you can set up like whatever you know 9 by 16 16 by 9 whatever clips you want to do and then you just tell them how how long you want them for so along you know 60 seconds is usually the max on a lot of these platforms so that you do 30 to 60 seconds so then you just let let it go and then it usually uploads it usually cuts out about i don't know 10 uh shorts clips it does all of the captioning you know it throws up little yeah. little words and stuff like that and then you can go through each one of them if you want to <laughs> it just you you'd have to sit there and take time to watch every single one and say oh i like this i don't like this if you do you can actually like cut out words like in between and it'll just cut to the next spot spot mm. um it just ta- that just takes the time but you don't have to sit there and go through the entire episode and you know figure all that out yeah clip it all out and then you just download it Hmm. and then you can just that's what i used a you know social champ to just like okay you can set up for every day that you want you can you can do repeat posts so it'll it'll keep on repeating you know every week the same thing or um it's it's that's really what what's nice about that because the social champ.io you can set up for an entire year or two years if you've got actual clips to throw in there now, I do have another question, follow-up. Have you noticed when you upload them from social, was it social champ? Social champ. Champ. Uh, what is the engagement? Because I've noticed that when I used a third-party poster, my engagement was in the toilet. 
Yeah, it's it's actually good. It actually shows you every single uh, channel that you upload to. So when you just do the normal one, I think it's twenty nine dollars a month for Social Champ. It it you're only allowed to upload uh, twelve different uh, social media sites. Mm-hmm. So you can do you know TikTok, Facebook, and things of that nature. And then when you do that. After they post, you can actually go into it and click on each one of them to see exactly how much that it's actually you know received for views. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Gives you analytics. Yes, yeah, that's does. really good. And I mix both of them. So I have him put all of the shorts that he loads into Social Champ into our Google Drive. And I have the Google Drive on my phone. And I have a little task on my Google Calendar. So every other day, I will go into the drive, grab a video put one sentence and 12 hashtags with it and upload it to Instagram and let it post onto Facebook. And that will um, give me my reels and give you that like, you know, we did the work kind of analytics. So combining both of them gives you the frequency to feed the algorithm and also the, you know, manual labor the algorithm likes as well. And then it's really easy because your drive is on your phone and you're just, I mean, it takes me like Like five seconds. Well, speaking (laughs) of that, If you are on the Elite Life podcast platform, remember that we drop new episodes every Thursday. And Erica, where can they find you in your podcast? Everywhere. You can just type in the Scoop podcast with, you have to say with Erica Krupen because there's a lot of Scoop podcasts. I'm going to pop up on Apple, um, Amazon, Audible, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the places. Beautiful. Google, thank you. (laughs) That's where I hear you. Yes. All right, you guys. And until next time, bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us today on the Elite Life Podcast with Trish and Kylie. Don't forget to share this episode with a friend so we can keep delivering you more fantastic insights on grit, grace, and growth. Stay connected with us on Instagram and Facebook, where we'll keep the ideas flowing to help you build a life you love and leave a legacy you can be proud of. Until next time.